Time for some review today. It's finally my review of MSI RTX 3080 Supreme X Edition. This will be really nice, so stick around. Welcome back to Budway YouTube channel, folks. This is TD, your host, and today I have this MSI RTX 3080 Supreme X Edition on review. In this video, I will be looking at the gaming performance, the thermal performance, and the noise profile of this graphics card. And I will be comparing it with this guy, the last generation top of the tier RTX series graphics card from NVIDIA, the RTX 2080 Ti. But before, let's roll the intro. I have done unboxing video on this graphics card. You can check it. The links are provided down below or up above right now. But wait, once you have watched this video first, Let's first talk about this graphics card. This graphics card is part of MSI's brand new lineup of GPUs that they recently launched with NVIDIA 30 series of graphics card. In MSI Supreme X lineup, we have got two variants. As you are aware, this graphics card is part of NVIDIA's RTX 3080 lineup. And let's go through the basic spec of this graphics card. MSI Supreme X RTX 3080 is part of NVIDIA's MPR architecture on a Samsung 8 nanometer process. The base clock of this graphics card is still the same with the NVIDIA spec which is 1440 MHz. However, the boost clock is between 1905 to 1920 MHz out of the box. Still has got the same 10 gig of GDDR6. On total graphics power side, this GPU is supposed to draw 370 watts on its 3 8 pin power connector. The base specs aside, what makes this card so special, right? That's what you wanna know in this review. So let me talk through on it. First of all, the clocks. This MSI Supreme X graphics card is heavily overclocked right out of the box. MSI has pushed the stock GPU boost to 1905 MHz, which is 11% higher than NVIDIA base pay. And on top, if you install the Dragon Center software, and on there activate the extreme performance you can reach the stock boost clock of 1920 MHz that is more than 12% higher which is awesome design wise apart from the clocks it looks really really beautiful and this card freaking weighs 1.87 kg or 4.14 pound the front of the GPU cover is a mixture of brushed aluminium metal look part of it is plastic the back panel here is pure metal and the aluminium panel has brushed look. Back to the front, between the polygon shapes, we have three 90mm double ball bearing MSI patented Tox Fan 4.0 fans. We have three RGB lighting zones on this GPU. One is between the three fans here, one on the top portion stretched towards the both ends. Last LED zone is at the back cover where the MSI Dragon logo is. So it's a three slot design in short. Let's start with the power profile here in this graphics card. MSI has gone with a beefier power delivery system in this one and it takes 3 8 pin power to power on. The TGB of this graphics card is 370 watts which is 15% higher than the standard NVIDIA spec at 320 watts. At the same time, hence why MSI recommends us to use 850 watts or higher power supply. MSI is stuck with 4 IO ports here. 3 of them are DisplayPort 1.4a and one HDMI 2.1. Designs apart, let's come back to the performance. But before, let me introduce you guys to my test rig here. I've got a Ryzen 9 5900X as my CPU on a MSI X570 Tomahawk motherboard. The memory kits are rated at 3600 at seal 16. Everything is housed inside this Metallic Gear Neo Air. But for now, let's go into the game performance, starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At a quick glance, what we can see in this benchmark run of Shadow of the Tomb Raider is our GPU core clock. Right now, the GPU core clock is hovering between 1905 MHz and 1935 MHz, depending on the frames that it is rendering. The temperature on this GPU is a bit toasty, hovering between 77 to 78 degrees centigrade, which is rather high and not that I was expecting. The fans have already ramped up to 73 to 74% of their speed and I can tell you they are a little louder right now. Now do note this is the 4K resolution and the GPU core clock actually stays on this range on 4K resolution games. Before we start crunching the numbers, let me be clear, 
all the numbers that you will be seeing from here on are based on the raw performance of the GPU from the both team, red and green team. And I didn't want it to include the RTX or DLSS performance because it's not available in both the teams on all the cards. So let's start crunching the numbers. Starting with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at 4K resolution, the benchmark data extracted for Shadow of the Tomb Raider was using DirectX 12 at highest settings with TAA enabled. This MSI Supreme X card scored 84 frames on average. This is actually 33% higher than the last generation 2080 Ti. Dropping down to 2K resolution, this MSI RTX 3080 has scored average FPS of 146. This is actually 27% faster than the last generation 2080 Ti. Dropping further down to Full HD resolution, we can observe that the MSI Supreme X RTX 3080 has scored 183 average frames. Moving on to our next game, our beloved Cyberpunk. This MSI Supreme X GPU has scored 44 frames on average compared to 20 last chance 2080 Ti, 31 frames. This is again 42% jump in performance. Dropping down to 1440p resolution, this MSI Supreme X scores 85 FPS on average with 68 FPS on 1% low. This is again 20% higher than the last generation 2080 Ti. On Full HD resolution, this MSI Supreme X RTX 3080 scored 121 frames. That is again 21% faster than the last generation 2080 Ti. Our next game is Dirt 5 which is mainly an AMD title and in this game at ultra high resolution the Supreme X RTX 3080 score on an average 104 FPS. This is 31% faster than 2080 Ti. Dropping down to 1440p resolution our MSI card scored 142 frames per second. This is again 31% faster than the last gen flagship RTX 2080 Ti. Dropping down to full HD resolution this MSI card scored 164 average frames with 138 1% low. This is a jump of 34% from RTX 2080 Ti. Next up is our Vulcan title. On Doom Eternal, Ultra Nightmare and Gritty settings, our MSI card scored on average of 182 FPS with 130 in 1% low. This score is actually 49% faster than the last gen's 2080 Ti. The similar score difference is also observed in 1440p where our MSI card scored on an average 317 FPS whereas the 2080 Ti had only 225. Further down in 1080p resolution, our MSI scored 408 FPS compared to 2080 Ti's 318. This is a 28% jump in performance. Now on the newer title, Assassin's Creed Valhalla in 4K resolution, ultra high, render scale of 100%. Our MSI card scores 53 frames on average, 32% higher than 2080 Ti. Dropping down to 1440p, our MSI scores 72 frames on average, the performance gap of 16%. Further down to Full HD, the performance gap narrows with only 13% where the MSI card scores 85 frames on average. On the next title, Watchdog Legion, which is again NVIDIA title, the MSI card scores on average 52 FPS with 43 on 1% low, making the performance gap of 24%. Dropping further down 1440p resolution, we see the MSI card scores 82 FPS on average. That is another 20% of performance difference. Further down on 1080p, we can see the MSI card scores between 100 FPS and here the performance gap reduces to only 15% from the last generation 2080 Ti. So far you can clearly see the performance gap between the two generations of graphics card is higher on 4K resolution rather than 1080p resolution. So for the next benchmarks, I will let the slideshow show you the numbers.
So guys, this were our gaming benchmark. On our productivity test, I used V-Ray for our GPU rendering capability, 664 paths compared to RTX 2080 Ti's 373. This is a 73% jump in performance. Next up is our handbrake encoding. Here we could see there is no time difference. That means the RTX 3080 is actually performing on par with the last generation 2080 Ti. On our next benchmarking from Blender rendering on Nvidia GPUs, we could see a very nominal difference. This actually could be considered as margin of error. Next up, there are a couple of synthetic benchmarks that I ran, especially 3D Mark Time Spy and Fire Strike scores. In the bunch, just for fun, I also included 3D Mark 11 scores. On an average, we could see the performance gains are as expected between 23 and 33% based on settings the benchmarks are running at. In my observation, what I've realized, especially on this Supreme X card, it retains around 1975 to 1990 MHz of GPU boost clock once it, I'm playing on a 1080p resolution. Once I bump up to 2K resolution, the GPU boost clock drops down to 1950 to 1940 during the 4K gameplays, goes until 1935, 1925, and at times I did saw the GPU boost dropping the GPU clocks to 1890. Let me talk about the power draw. During the performance runs, especially on 1440p, I did saw the power usage of this entire test rig was crossing 550 watts, and at times I did saw it's going and touching above 574 watts which is huge really huge a special mention during this talk has to be the power spike now during my random checks or random observation with my power meter i did saw the power spikes was quite heavy especially i could see the power spikes touched around 594 watts so in that case if you are not in a good power supply then you are in trouble because the over current production will kick in it might shut down your system abruptly and if you don't have ocp then probably you might end up smelling some smokes another tricky bit i haven't seen anyone explaining or anyone uh, mentioning that how much power you can get to draw your system right now on with a 3080 and probably a ryzen 9 or maybe on one of the intel i9s i ran a prime 95 stress testing for the cpu and at the same time i ran firmware stress testing on the gpu what i did realize was this entire system with the ryzen 9 5900x and rtx 3080 was consuming 626 watts now just to top it off i just wanted to have fun and at the same time i also did run the heaven benchmark it was just wild i did saw the entire system this entire test rig was pulling 666 watts at that's how power hungry these new components are let's talk about the thermals on this graphics card now Mainly, I did two types of thermal tests in this graphics card in this configuration. The first one was to run Final Fantasy Benchmark in a loop and I ran it for half an hour. When the panel was open, the maximum or the average temperature that I observed was 66 degrees. The fans were at 58%. As for my note here, they were running at 1825 RPM. Now when I close the side panel, the temperature rose to 72 degrees on an average and that time the fans were ramping up at 72 percent with 2262 rpm i'm not really happy with this graphics card because it's hot it's hotter than what i had expected so being one of the higher end graphics card you don't expect a really high temperatures do you apparently it means adding more metal to it increasing its weight doesn't really help with the thermals you need to optimize it how asus did so I'm sorry MSI, I'm not impressed. So these things are subjective. Consider this based on my scenario and just don't blindly say, okay, this is not a cooler card. This is for me and I'm not impressed. So this is my opinion. The Torx 4X double bearing fan on this graphics card can be loud at some certain RPM. Now on a typical gaming run, I did realize the fan speed were between 60 to 65% and in that case on 62% and this is what it sounds like.
during my heavy stress test this is how the 72 percent sounds finally it's the conclusion time i know the gpu market is not good at the moment and there's no way you can find easily as rtx 3080 but if you do find this graphics card you won't regret the reason being it's one of those cards that will make you happy perform well in all the games and at the same time will hurt your wallet for sure still in my honest opinion i think msi has rushed into the release of this graphics card especially on the thermal point they would have more optimized it before launching it but they haven't so I'm a little disappointed on this purchase. Price wise, the suggested retail price of this graphics card in US is 899 US dollar and in UK 849 pounds and in New Zealand 2000 New Zealand dollars. I will give you a few points why you might not consider this card in your first place if you have multiple cards to choose from. The first being the cost. This is one of the costliest graphics card and the performance boost that you are getting on this card compared to the other cheaper cards probably that is a better choice than buying this one by paying extra second point this graphics card is heavy and you need to consider what motherboards you're gonna put in and what orientation you have to consider using the provided anti-sag bracket now on the opposite side of the coin why you should consider it first thing if this is the only card that you're getting in the market and budget is not a concern for you go ahead this is the card for you second if you are on msi ecosystem and you are fine with the amount to pay buy this graphics card third point if you are someone who loves msi and wants to have msi latest and greatest this is the card for you this is the best air cooled card that you can buy from msi so fourth point if you like this graphics card, how it looks, and you are fond of this looks and aesthetics, go ahead. Thanks for watching this review, guys. Hope this review helps you on your purchases. Please like and subscribe to my channel and share this video if you like. Stay tuned for more RTX 3080 contents on this channel. But for now, catch you on the next one.